sheep to this area, the grazing down below and so on, uh, usually like in the fall or in the spring. They weren't too far from their homes because the Tova is another distance, same, about the same distance away from here. So uh, summer they brought the sheep there. But uh, remember in uh, the children were taking care of the sheep, they said the angel came three times. He came once in the spring. Now they didn't know dates, they didn't keep dates, so, but they do remember that all of a sudden, as they were with the sheep, they saw this bright light come. And they wanted to, they thought it was going to rain, so they were going to take the sheep back, bring them back under, you saw the covering that the sheep had. Okay. Um, a sudden, bring a bright light came and they saw the figure of this, of a figure in white who was the angel, the mysterious figure. And he told them, do not be afraid. And he told them that Jesus and Mary had great designs, as we heard, of mercy for them. And he taught them, remember, a, a prayer uh, called the pardon prayer. Mm -hmm. See, I always say that the angel apparitions prepared the children in three ways. Okay, at the first apparition, he prepared them by making them conscious to pray for the salvation of souls. Mm -hmm. Because many times we just pray for ourselves. We pray, in fact, a lot of people only pray when they need something. They only run to God, you know, for that reason. <laughs> but we should pray for others. Amen. Especially, that's very important to Our Lady because she wants all her children to be saved. And she needs our prayers and our sacrifices, as we heard. You know, make, pray, pray often, make many sacrifices. And so, um, the angel taught them the prayer we call the pardon prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you, and I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love me. So all the, the virtues of the Christian life, the main ones, were right there in that prayer in the beginning. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, I love you. Okay, and that's what we should do. We should believe, we should uh, hope in Jesus, you know, for salvation. Um, uh, I... I Adore. I adore, because adoration is the expression of our faith and hope. And then finally, I love you. All right? But then he added, and I, and I beg pardon, or I ask pardon, for those who do not believe, many without faith today, do not hope, they despair, they don't believe that God can help them. They uh, do not uh, adore and, and do not love thee. Okay, so that's the first thing the angel taught them was to be conscious. And he told them, you know, the, uh, to, to pray, uh, to pray a great deal. The second apparition, the angel happened down by the well, as we saw that this morning. Okay, that was the second apparition. That was in the summer. Now, the third apparition, okay, which was different than the first two, okay, because what happened is this happened in the fall, all right? And uh, the angel came with the Blessed Sacrament. You'll see, I don't know if we can see it on the other side of that. Yes. But the angel is holding the host over a chalice. Now remember, an angel cannot consecrate the Blessed Sacrament. It has to be a priest. It has to be a human being. Okay? Who's, who's ordained? And so the angel came, he took the, the host, and he took the, the chalice. He placed the host and chalice on the rock there, and the host began to drip blood, the precious blood of Jesus into the chalice. He came around and he said a prayer uh, with the children. I don't have a copy of it here, but you know, almost Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world. Information, outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended. By the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. So he taught them a prayer of reparation. By the way, they knelt down with their heads to the floor, to the ground. The children did the same. The Muslims pray that way. Okay. I told, in my book, I told people, please don't try to do that. You might not get up. <laughs> I just somebody, read that. I just read somebody that. Get, their head will be spinning, you know, and they're not used to having all the blood rush to their head. Okay, so 
Then he gave them communion. Now, Lucia had already received her first Holy Communion. She did it by way of an exception. She was only about six when she received the First Communion. He gave her the host. But the other two children, he gave them the precious blood of Jesus to drink from the chalice. All right? And uh, so they, re they received communion that day. And he told them to make reparation for the offenses against God because Jesus is so offended in the most blessed sacrament. As you know, all kinds of uh, outrages, black masses and mm -hmm. everything else, desecration. I remember, uh, I told the story recently, of, uh, F of Cardinal <coughs> O'Connor when he came into New York. There was a group, a radical group called ACT UP, yeah. and they, they threatened yeah. to de demonstrate in the cathedral, and they did. And Father Benedict answered the Cardinal's call for priests to come down and help out. And he said he gave communion to this one man who took the host in his hand and turned it like this. And then he said, this is what I think of your God. He, he, he crushed the host and threw it on the floor. Now that's an outrage. That's saying to Jesus, I hate you. Somebody has to say to Jesus, I love you. That's reparation. Okay. And then to pray for the conversion of the person who did that. You know, I was with the secretary of Cardinal O'Connor about two weeks ago. And he, he was there for that incident. He said the next day, the Cardinal got up very early and he, and the, as his secretary, went through the cathedral looking for the host that had been desecrated. Mm -hmm. And he said he was crying the whole time, the Cardinal. That's how offensive it was. So, outrages, sacrileges, when people receive communion and they, and they know they're in mortal sin, you're not supposed to get, the, get that sin off your soul. Go to confession so that you make it a good communion. Communion, and then finally, for those who are indifferent, just talk in church, disrespect, no acknowledgement of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So these are the ways that Jesus is offended in the Most Blessed Sacrament, and so the angel was teaching the children that this part of their mission is to make up atonement for these offenses against Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Now I'm going to tell you a story. I've been told it, but they're not sure whether it's true or not. But I like it. <laughs> uh, see, I told you that children don't know the dates of the time the angel came. Now, the fall, one great feast that occurs in the fall, and this angel said he was the guardian angel of Portugal, um, is the feast of St. Michael. Okay? Now, in Portugal, I was told the oldest church in Portugal named after St. Michael. That particular, the, 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 uh, every year the priest had a procession with the Blessed Sacrament through the town. Then after the procession was over, he would put the Blessed Sacrament back in the tabernacle, and then he didn't have a safe, so he would put his chalice in the tabernacle for safekeeping. The next day, after the Feast of St. Michael, he went back to the tabernacle. The host was gone. The chalice had been moved, but not stolen. And there was a drop of blood on the corporal, the cloth inside the tabernacle. So the priest trying to figure what happened to the host. He prayed that it would not, not be desecrated. Uh, he wondered how, how come if the thief touched the chalice, why didn't he steal it? And where did that drop of blood come from? And he prayed. I understand he prayed about 20 years. He prayed, he prayed to God that before he died, he would find out what happened. And finally, when Sister Lucia wrote her memoirs, and she wrote about that, about the angel apparition here, with the Eucharist, the priest read it and he said, that's it. He said, he took the host from his own church, a church dedicated to him, St. Michael, okay? And the drop of blood would have been because it was the precious blood had been in the chalice, you see? Now, I don't know if that's true, but I, I thought it was. <laughs> I like it too. It sounded pretty good to me. But that's the reparation we must make. Okay. Our group move. Let's move. There's another group very patiently waiting for us. If we could just come down and let them in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But thank you very much, Father.